The creators of Throne Room Reviews would like to say that this is a fan-made show. We do not own any of the copyrighted material used within the episode. All copyrighted material belongs to their respected owners. Any copyright infringement is non-intentional. This message has been brought to you by Plan 12 Entertainment. Hello my friends and welcome to Throne Room Reviews. We continue our look at movies with another old British comedy, one of my personal favourites. The film is Those Magnificent Men in Their Flying Machines or How I Flew from London to Paris in 25 hours 11 minutes. Strangely enough that is not the longest movie title of all time. For simplicity's sake if I have to mention the title of the film again I will refer to it as Those Magnificent Men. The film is simple in its premise like the Tipfield Thunderbolt. The plot is a British newspaper owner in 1910 is sponsoring a race between London and Paris to be done through the use of aircraft and pilots from all over the world, mostly from Europe, are competing. Let's move on to the characters. I will note that this was the 1960s and so like Italia Axis powers, the film relies on a lot of stereotypes. Let's start with the Englishmen as there are a lot of them. We see four, though there are supposed to be six, and only two really affect the plot. But I'll mention the four we see anyway. Richard Mays, our main English pilot, is really to my mind the personification of the British stiff upper lip. Sir Percy Ware Armitage, who has bad teeth, and is a dishonourable baronet who cheats. Lieutenant Parsons, here to represent the British naval might, and Harry Popperwell, an aircraft designer, there for the notion that the Brits invented everything. Moving on to the other pilots, the Scotsman is a lover of alcohol, the French pilot is a constant lover, the American is a cowboy, etc. However, the stereotypes, well, most of the stereotypes, are not offensive, and they're never the joke themselves. They're just the basis for the character-driven humour. For example, there's a running gag where the French pilot, Pierre Dubois, seems to run into women with the same face. Finally, as a last comment on the stereotypes, how can you complain when the characters are being played by actors of their correct nationality? The humour, as I said earlier, is character-driven and stems from the situation and is rooted in the time of the film, the late Edwardian era. But in places, it's a wild comedy. I will admit that some jokes don't work, but they're easily overlooked as there are some great jokes in the film. However, the biggest problem with the film is its romantic subplot. A love triangle between Richard Mays, the main British pilot, Patricia Ronsley, the daughter of the newspaper owner, and Orville Newton, the American pilot. It's not the idea of the subplot itself that's bad. The film had to feature something other than the air race and the practicing, as it would get old. But overall, this subplot is not actually that compelling. Other than those small complaints, this film is very good. The planes are go- Each have their own charm and are easily identifiable from each other. All the flying scenes are a sight to behold. And it has a great all- I'm gonna list off the most- Terry Thomas, who plays Sir Percy Ware Armitage, has appeared in a lot of British comedies. However, I think most will recognise him as the voice of Sir Hiss in Disney's Robin Hood. Yes, this is the real face of Sir Hiss. If you didn't know that before, then you may not be able to see Robin Hood the same way again. Gert Fovey, who is best known for playing Goldfinger and Baron Bombus in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, plays the main German. At first, he's not the pilot, but due to events that I cannot reveal for spoilers, he ends up flying to comedic effect. Eric Sykes, who plays Sir Percy's suffering lackey, is best known for his comedy short films and his television series that ran for 20 years, co-starring Hattie Jakes. Tony Hancock, who plays Popperwell, best known for his radio and television shows for the BBC. And finally, Benny Hill, who plays the fire chief. While it seems odd that this film reduces a few of Britain's top comedy stars to bit parts, like the Ten Commandments, it's just enjoyable to know that they are in the film. 
and for what little they have to contribute in the film, they give very funny performances. Hancock is one of my favourite lines in the film. I know that this review has been longer than my others, but this is because there is so much to talk about. I could have spent about an hour talking about this film in full. That's how good it is. This film I highly recommend for everyone to see. No film is perfect, and while this film is not a great film, it is a fun film, as all comedy should be. It was also successful enough to get a sequel. We'll be looking at that one next time. This is King William saying, hope to see you soon on another Throne Room Review.